Hello everyone, Mr. Slope Guy here today to help you with equations involving fractions. And we're going to do a method called fraction busting. And we're going to work on getting rid of uh, fractions with equations. So removing fractions with a variable by multiplying by the reciprocal. So the first kind of problem we're going to look at is whenever you just have a fraction in front of a variable, like we have 1 8 in front of x. Every time we have just a fraction in front of a variable, we can always multiply by the reciprocal or the inverse and get rid of the fraction. So what's the reciprocal or inverse of 1 8 is 8 over 1. And when I multiply 8 over 1 times 1 8, I always get the same thing happen. I get 8 over 8 in this case, which is 1, because every number times its reciprocal or times its inverse will give you 1, which is 1x, which gets the x by itself. And then on the other side of the equation, we get the number part of our answer. So 8 times negative 5, negative 40, divided by 8, and we end up with negative 5. So whenever you have a fra fraction in front of a variable, we can just get rid of it by multiplying by the inverse or the reciprocal of that fraction. So for example, we have 2 thirds y. How would I get rid of the 2 thirds in front of the y? We multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal or inverse of 2 thirds? It is 3 halves. So if I multiply both sides by 3 halves, I can then isolate the y. Get the y by itself. Solve for y. Now, fraction busting, when we have one or more fractions in our equation, we can remove all the fractions from the equation just by multiplying both sides of the equation by the LCM, the least common multiple. So as these equations look more and more difficult with more and more fractions, I can just check for the denominators to see what kind of denominators do I have. And if I can figure out the least common multiple, I could then get rid of all of the fractions in a single step. So remember least common multiple. Um, if I'm counting by sixes, six, 12, 18, 24. If I'm counting by eights, eight, 16, 24, 32. So the least common multiple would be the smallest multiple that is on both lists. And in this case, our least common multiple or our LCM would be 24. So if I had a problem where I had six and eight in the denominator, I could get rid of it um, using multiplying both sides by 24. So let's move on to some examples. So let's say we have a problem that looks like this. A very common problem. We have 2 fifths x plus 2 equals 3 fourths. So we have two different fractions in this problem. What are the two denominators in the problem? 5 and 4. And if I were to add 5 and 4 um, with fractions, I would need to find a least common denominator or a least common multiple for 5 and 4. If I count by 5s, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, count by 4s, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. I would quickly get to 20. I don't have to show all those steps. I could pretty well do that in my head. If I have 5 and 4, my least common multiple is 20. So by multiplying by both sides by 20, I can get rid of all of these fractions in one step. So then on the left side, I need to multiply everything by 20. Right side, multiply everything by 20. So I can do 20 times 2 is 40, divided by 5 is 8. 20 times 2 is 40. 20 times 3 is 60, divided by 4 would give me 15. And I can write it out and do all the long fractions, and I'll get the same thing. I can cancel and multiply, Can't, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 25 times, and get 15. So within one step, by multiplying everything by 20, I go from having two fractions to just having 8x plus 40 equals 15. Subtract 40 from each side, and divide by 3. So even though I ended up with a fraction for an answer, I never had to change everything to a common denominator by just using that least common multiple of 20 and multiplying everything by 20, clearing out the fractions with fraction busting. All right, let's look at a new one. Oh, and then most of the time we'll leave these as an improper fraction, but it would be equivalent to negative 3 and an 8 if you're asked to write it as a mixed number. So we have three denominators in this problem, 5, 3, and 5, but the 5s repeat. So we really have denominators of 5 and 3. So first I need to ask myself, what is the least common multiple for 5 and 3? Well, the least common multiple would be 15. 
So I want to multiply the entire left side by 15, multiply the entire right side by 15. So I can do 15 times 1 is 15, divided by 5 is 3. 15 times 2 is 30, divided by 3 is 10. 15 times 3 is 45, divided by 5 is 9, or 9x. So when I distribute that 15, and you could write it out with fractions if it helps, I would get 3 equals 10 plus 9x. Now I don't have any fractions. I got some nice whole numbers to work with. Subtract 10 from each side, divide both sides by 9, and I get negative 7 ninths. So multiplying everything by 15 in that case cleared those fractions away and made it not so difficult of a problem. Otherwise, every time you add or subtract something to each side, you would have to find common denominator. With multiplying by least common multiple, we don't have to worry about that every time we add or subtract with two different denominators. All right, you guys pause the video here. See if you can solve for B by using the least common multiple to fraction bust. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hopefully you decided the least common multiple for 3 and 6 was 6. So if we multiply both sides by 6, we get 6 times 1 third, or 1 third of 6 is 2. Because 6 times 1 is 6, divided by 3 is 2, so we get 2B. Don't forget to multiply that 6 times negative 1 to get negative 6. And then on the right side of the equal sign, 5 times 6 is 30, divided by 6 is 5. So we've gone to from one step having but two, two different fractions to having no fractions with multiplying everything by 6. Add 6 to each side, divide by 2, and I get B is 11 halves or 5 and a half. Now, what if you're asked to distribute a fraction? Well, instead of distributing a fraction, I only have one denominator in this problem of 4. If I multiply both sides by 4, I can get rid of the fraction before I distribute. And that can keep me from making a bunch more fractions. So if I multiply the left side and right side both by 4 or 4 over 1, then on the left side, the 4s will cancel. And then I only really have to worry about distributing that 3 because I'm left with 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 1 is 1 is 3 over 1. So on the left side, I just have to distribute the 3. 3 times b is 3b. 3 times 8 is 24. And then since I multiplied the left side by 4, i got to keep it equivalent and multiply the right side by 4 and get 15 times 4 is 60. So then I just have that 3 that I distributed to get 3b plus 24 equals 60. Now I have a much simpler two-step problem. I can subtract 24 from each side and divide by 3. So that's one option instead of um, distributing a fraction and making more fractions is that I can multiply both sides by that denominator and getting rid of the fraction before I distribute. So what if I had a problem like this? I have 1 third z plus 1 fourth equals 5 fourths. I have denominators of 3 and 4, so what can I multiply by to get rid of all of the fractions? You just multiply everything by 12. Multiply both sides by 12. And clear all the fractions. All right, you guys try this one on your own. Only one denominator to deal with. Try it on your own and then unpause the video. All right, welcome back. So we only had one denominator in this problem. It was 8. It repeats itself. But I'm just going to multiply both sides by 8. And if I'm looking for 7 eighths of 8 or 8 times 7 divided by 8, I'm just left with 7 h. Then 5 eighths of 8 is negative 5, so negative 5 there, and 2 times 8 is 16. So by multiplying everything by 8, I get rid of all the fractions to get 7h minus 5 equals 16. Then I can solve my two-step equation. I can add 5 to each side and divide both sides by 7 to get h is equal to 3. All right, so I hope that helps you guys dealing with those fractions. Don't be afraid of them. Bust them up. Have a great day. OU2 spells out.